Podcasts and audiobooks are my personal favorite form of entertainment. It's what I spend the most time absorbing. I don't watch that much TV. I watch less YouTube podcasts all the time. So I want to tell you what I think the best podcasts are. I mean, actually, just some of my personal favorites. In fact, these first ones are going to be a little quirky. Like, they're really my personal taste, and I don't know if you're going to like it, but I hope you do. And if these aren't the shows you were looking for, I've got a few other videos with different genres that might have something. I have to start off with the podcast that explains this shirt that I'm wearing. Roderick on the Line is a show I've been listening to for years now, and it's a tough one to recommend because it's not really about a lot. It started off when Merlin Mann did an interview with John Roderick of The Long Winters years back and realized how incredibly interesting John Roderick is. Did I ever tell you about the time uh, that... Uh, <laughs> so... so. <laughs> Let's assume you have it. I don't want to go down the rabbit hole of all the times that I have been literally tracked by a bear. In the 90s, he was in the rock band The Long Winters, which I hadn't heard of before the show. He grew up in Alaska. His dad was a senator, I think. And basically, he just has a lot of crazy stories and is good at telling them. I think the reason I always love this show is that it has a lot of heart to it, as well as being silly and funny. There's just some real moments about life and philosophy and history and a lot of goofy stuff on the side. Give it a shot. I'd recommend episode 125. I think that's the one where they introduced the phrase, all the great shows. My next must to listen to podcast every week is The Flophouse. It's a comedy podcast about bad movies and it does not matter at all if you care about bad movies or not. I don't. I don't watch bad movies. There's a lot of Sylvester Stallone banter in this movie where he delivers it like it's a clever line, but it's not. It just doesn't make any sense. But I'm he, he sells it. He tries to sell it. No, he doesn't. He's really lazy with, it, with his <laughs> line delivery. He's kind of bored. He and the detective agree to work together. We're going to do this my way. This is my town. We're going to do this my way. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Dude. Sly Stallone just walked That's in. That's right. Hello, Dan. Hello, Stuart. It's me, Sylvester Stallone. <laughs> All right. Well, see you later. <laughs> I'm not going anywhere. Oh, in fact, oh, if I could crash bad. on your couch, I'd really appreciate it. That's too bad. We were hoping you were going to go get Elliot. Adrian! <laughs> Sorry, I was yelling the name of my favorite Roman emperor, Adrian. <laughs> The best analogy I've heard for the show is it's kind of like sitting in a writer's room where people are just spitballing jokes. Some of them work, some of them don't, but when they work, they're pretty amazing. Two of the hosts, Elliot Kalin and Dan McCoy, were longtime writers on The Daily Show, and then Stuart Wellington is just a handsome counterpoint. Again, these are the shows that are hardest to get into, and I've tried recommending Flophouse to some people, and they just don't really like it, but they are wrong. It is very funny. You should definitely go listen to it. The episode I'll recommend to get into it is all the way back in 2008, and it's about brats. You, you can start anywhere and then just binge from the beginning if you want. That's what I did. Okay, just two more shows. These ones have really short episodes. So they're easy to digest. Robot or Not started out as a show where Jason Snell would ask John Syracuse if a certain item is a robot. Is a Roomba a robot? Is a computer a robot? Is a car factory robot a robot? Yeah. So, but, it, but it's all checkout machines, not a robot. Nope. What would make a self-checkout machine a robot? Maybe uh, if it was a robot, it would be a robot. <laughs> what if it had arms? What if it, what if it bagged? What if there was a bagging arms attached to the self-checkout machine? Would it be a robot? No, no, it would not be. It doesn't do anything by itself. It barely does anything with the help of a human. Like, you can barely get it to fulfill its intended function, which is to register the prices and extract money from you with you participating the entire time. By itself, it does nothing. More recent episodes have moved on to important topics like life and death and what is brunch and what makes a Christmas movie a Christmas movie. So... I recommend it. They're like five minutes each. Just give it a try. Final recommendation is Star Wars Minute, where they watch all the Star Wars movies and then talk about them one minute at a time. You have to like Star Wars to enjoy this <laughs> a lot. Well, then I thought maybe when Luke was unconscious from the Sand People, maybe that Luke first gave him a blood test and was like, yeah, all right, this will do, and then woke him up. Like, I like how the time where Luke is unconscious, more and more stuff keeps happening. <laughs> yeah. Ben tests him for midichlorian, says he's a Jedi. He gives him more of a sedative to keep him unconscious. Goes, sure. kills the Lars family, makes it look like Storm Stormtroopers goes kills the Jawas, makes that look like stormtroopers. Goes back to be like, oh, let me wake up. <laughs> it's like four days later. Yeah. <laughs> Episodes can range from 10 minutes to half an hour. And as long as you know the films, you don't really have to watch the clip that they're talking about. A lot of the time, it just turns into different insights about characters and story points from Star Wars you haven't thought about. So they're spending a few years dissecting every Star Wars plot point that's ever happened. And now that Disney owns it, they're going to be doing it forever. And that shows by Alex Robinson and Pete the Retailer. No, wait, I'm going to include one more show. Now that I've mentioned both Merlin Mann and John Syracuse, if you end up liking their personalities, because they both just have good ideas about virtually any topic, like they're good at picking something apart and telling you why you might 
be more into it than you thought you were. They have a show together called Reconcilable Differences, and it is one of my favorite shows, but I had to grow to love each of them individually from their separate shows before I could really appreciate how great it was to have these two minds coming together. We're both into our own like stuff, right? But there are a lot of things that I'm into that you just have no, that's not even on your map and vice versa. I didn't even know what all to write down. I have anime. I have destiny. I have many, many, many video game things. I don't want to make you talk about video games. if you Yeah, well, no, that's what I was thinking of. It's like video games is just a gigantic black hole in your, like, there's nothing there in your life as far, except for like threes. It's inexcusable as somebody who likes to consider himself a more or less up-to-date evolving person. I was like I woke up one day and after years of hearing Andy Bayo talk about bleep bloop music and stuff, I woke up one day and I went, wow, A, video games are a thing. And I've been joking about them because I think they're silly because I haven't played them. But B, arguably then the more important consequence is like there's just this whole way of understanding modern life that I don't have access to. So definitely recommend that one, but I, I don't know what it would really sound like starting from nothing. So Maybe get into their other shows first. Still, it's a great show. And of course, my show, The Stallman Podcast, where I talk about photography, video production, just kind of anything that modern creators might want to know. I'm interviewing other YouTubers, other podcasters. I hope you like it. And I hope you like all these other shows. The links are in the description. 